Welcome to the Deep Dive, powered by the One More Stock channel. We are back, and today we are diving deep into, well, really one of the most compelling, maybe even a bit terrifying business transformations happening in tech right now. We are looking at a company sitting right at the crossroads of two massive trends, AI compute and uh, large-scale crypto mining. Specifically, we're focusing on iron, ticker dot iron. You might remember them as Iris Energy and the incredibly aggressive pivot. They've gone from mostly a Bitcoin miner to, well, aiming to be an AI compute powerhouse. Yeah, it's definitely more than just a pivot. It feels like a whole new identity they're building. And the material we've got, especially that comprehensive analysis from the One More Money blog, it really lays out the whole picture, you know, the financials, the strategy, but also the uh, the intense risks involved. So our mission today is to kind of cut through that complexity, pull out the key things you as a sophisticated investor need to know about why this is such a high stakes move, dual identity and the aggressive pivot. OK, so let's start with the basics. This rebranding happened late 2024. Before, they were pretty easy to pigeonhole. Mm -hmm. What are the two core businesses now defining iron? these two engines driving things? Well, fundamentally, they operate as a compute infrastructure company. And critically, they own the whole stack land, power substations, the works. We'll get into that more. They've got sites in Australia, Canada, and the US. And uh, they've basically set up two distinct engines. And they run on very different economics. First, there's the original business, Bitcoin mining. This is really their cash engine. It's been the main revenue source historically. But here's the twist in their strategy. Unlike a lot of miners who hoard Bitcoin, hoping the price goes up, Iron has this sell what you mine policy. They mine the BTC, they immediately sell it for cash. Hmm, that's really interesting. Almost sounds like you said deliberately uncrypto. It kind of is. By selling right away, they massively reduce their exposure to Bitcoin's price swings, you know, the volatility. So it's less about speculating on Bitcoin itself and more about creating this predictable cash flow, like a factory churning out capital they can then reinvest. OK, so mining is the cash factory. What about the second engine, the future growth part? that AI GPU cloud infrastructure. How does that actually work? Yeah, this is where all that reinvestment capital is going. This is the growth engine. They're building out massive data centers specifically designed for AI, offering GPU rentals, collocation, cloud services, basically everything needed for heavy AI workloads. The idea is to tackle the big bottleneck in AI right now, getting access to enough powerful GPUs with the right power and cooling all clustered together. The One More Money blog really highlights that demand here is, well, practically off the charts. And they are not messing around. They're moving incredibly fast, which seems essential in this space. I remember seeing that September 2025 announcement doubling their AI cloud capacity, something like 23,000 GPUs targeted, and boosting their AI cloud ARR goal to over half billion dollars. Yeah. That's not just testing the waters. That's a full dive. Exactly. That's the definition of an aggressive pivot. Like you said, it's a clear signal to the market. They're saying, look, we figured out large scale, power efficient crypto mining. We built that foundation. Now we're leveraging those economics, that infrastructure expertise to chase the much higher margins available in AI compute. OK, so the One More Money blog piece flagged five really interesting strategic points, things that explain the why behind this huge shift. Let's start with the margins, because that seems like the most straightforward reason to maybe cap the Bitcoin growth. Yeah, the margin difference is stark. It really tells the story. Even in early 2025, when mining was still bringing in way more revenue, think something like $45 million from mining versus maybe $1.6 million from AI in a given month, the profitability was just worlds apart. The AI side reportedly commands this almost unbelievable 97% hardware margin. Wow. Whereas mining, while still good, was around 76%. 97% hardware margin. That's, yeah. I mean, how do they even achieve that and keep it that high? Well, it's basically the economics of renting out very expensive, very in-demand assets. They spend huge amounts of capital up front on these top tier NVIDIA GPUs. Then they rent out that computing power. And because demand is so high, utilization rates are apparently extremely high. Once you cover that initial hardware cost, the ongoing cost to electricity, cooling is relatively low, especially because they've optimized that infrastructure already for mining efficiency. So that huge gap, 97% versus 76%, that's the explicit reason they've said they're capping further mining expansion. Around 52 exashes per second EHS is the limit. 52 agnatches. So for anyone listening who isn't deep in crypto mining, what does that number actually signify? Is that a lot? Oh, yeah. It's a significant amount of computing power focused on Bitcoin. It secures a 
pretty reliable stream of block rewards of Bitcoin. But by putting that hard cap on it, they're basically telling investors, OK, we've reached a level of predictable cash flow from mining that we're comfortable with. Yeah. Any additional capital we have is going straight into the AI infrastructure to chase that 97 percent margin, not the 76 percent. It's pure capital allocation logic. Right. Driven entirely by the margin potential. OK, insight number two from the blog, this super landlord idea. They argue IR is more than just your typical data center operator. What's the advantage of owning the whole infrastructure stack? It's all about vertical integration as a strategic moat. That's the core idea. When they say they own the land, the substations, the grid connections, the cooling systems, it means they sidestep a lot of the headaches and dependencies that rivals might face. They control the build-out timeline, which is critical when you need to deploy capacity fast to meet surging demand. But maybe more importantly, they control the cost. And this potentially lets them undercut competitors on GPU rental pricing. The analysis mentioned maybe up to 20% discounts compared to some peers, while still maintaining really strong margins themselves because their underlying costs are lower, They've apparently locked down around three gigawatts of power capacity potential using this model. That control over cost is definitely the leverage there. Now, let's get into insight three because there's a real financial tension here. How can IRNN report record profits like that Q4 FY25 with $187 million revenue accelerating EBITDA while also potentially burning through huge amounts of cash? Yeah, this is really the crux of the risk profile for Iron. It's absolutely true they hit net profitability around 70 cents per share in Q4 FY25. Looks great on the surface. However, building out AI infrastructure at this scale is incredibly capital intensive, just unbelievably expensive. The One More Money blog points out that buying thousands of cutting edge GPUs, building these specialized facilities, you could easily burn through over a billion dollars in cash. So what that means is during these aggressive growth phases, their free cash flow is often negative, deeply negative sometimes. They're essentially funding this expansion through two main mechanisms. One, tapping the equity markets, issuing more stock to raise cash for GPUs, and two, using that steady cash flow from the capped mining operations as a sort of temporary backstop. So their entire growth story really depends on the capital markets staying supportive of their plan. Which brings us back to Insight 4, that pragmatic, almost uncrypto approach to their mining cash flow. It reinforces this functional view. Exactly. It's not a bet on Bitcoin's price soaring. It's purely an infrastructure play. They treat those Bitcoin miners like um, like highly efficient machines that turn electricity into cash, period. And that's so important because it aligns all their incentives towards building out physical profitable infrastructure, not speculating on crypto prices. They're selling power arbitrage, essentially, not Bitcoin exposure. OK, and the final insight looks even further ahead. Liquid cooling. Why should an investor care right now that Iron is adopting direct-to-chip liquid cooling? It seems very technical. It is technical, but it's strategically vital. It's about future proofing. See, the latest generation of AI chips, and definitely the next ones coming, like NVIDIA's Blackwell, the GB200s, they generate immense heat, just huge thermal loads. Traditional air cooling methods struggle to handle that kind of heat density efficiently. By designing their new flagship facilities, like this Horizon 1 build with direct-to-chip liquid cooling from the start, Iron is positioning itself to host the most powerful, most premium AI workloads. These are the jobs that will likely command the highest prices and utilization rates. It gives them an edge to attract those clients who need that cutting edge capability, potentially long after air cooled centers become less competitive for high end tasks. All right, let's shift gears slightly and look at the hard numbers from the One More Money blog. We mentioned that explosive Q4 revenue growth up 228% year over year. What's the GPU fleet actually look like now to support that kind of AI ambition? Well, it's growing fast really uh -huh. fast. They recently bought more batches, including uh, 1,200 of the air-cooled B300s, which are still powerful, yeah. but crucially also 1,200 of the liquid-cooled GB300s. Those are the ones geared towards that next-gen high-heat workload we just talked about. This brings their total fleet now to over 10,000 GPUs, heading towards that much larger target. And maybe just as important, they secured NVIDIA preferred partner status. What does that actually mean, being a preferred partner? Is it just marketing or is there real substance there? Oh, no, it's definitely not just a badge. In the current market, actually getting your hands on enough top tier NVIDIA GPUs is a major challenge for everyone. Supply is tight. So that preferred partner status gives them a real competitive advantage. It likely means better access to supply, maybe better pricing or allocation priority. And it also helps with attracting clients. Big AI customers often prefer to work directly with NVIDIA's recognized partners. It adds a layer of credibility to their whole AI offering. Okay, so strong growth, key partnerships. 
But given this narrative, the valuation metrics are, well, pretty wild. Extremely high PE, massive volatility. Yeah, they definitely reflect a stock where the market has priced in years and years of future success already. It's very forward looking. The trailing price to earnings ratio, I think the blog cited it around 120 times, which is huge. Yeah. Though, if you believe the growth forecasts, the Ford PE drops quite a bit, maybe closer to 47 times. Still high, but reflects the expected earning surge. But the key thing for investors, I think, is the volatility. The beta reported was around 4.2. A beta of 4.2. So just to clarify for listeners, that basically suggests the stock is historically about four times more volatile than the overall market. Right? Exactly. It means small news can have a huge impact. A positive contract announcement could send the stock flying. A slight delay in a facility opening could cause a sharp drop. It amplifies everything. If you look at the 52-week trading range mentioned from about $5 to nearly $50, it tells you this isn't a stock you just buy and forget about. It demands close attention. Right. Which logically leads to the biggest question. What are the major risks here? Especially with that kind of valuation and competition heating up. Competition is definitely number one. You've got the hyperscalers, AWS, Google, Azure. They have almost unlimited resources. And you also have other specialized players like CoreWeave who are aggressively targeting the same AI compute market. So Iron really needs to execute flawlessly on its differentiation strategy. That means leveraging the cost advantages from owning their infrastructure and successfully delivering on that high-density, liquid-cooled niche. If they stumble on execution or can't compete on price or capability, they could get squeezed. And there was another financial flag raised in the One More Money blog, wasn't there? Something about insider selling. Yes, that's definitely something investors need to be aware of. It's a data point. The analysis highlighted that both co-CEOs had sold a significant number of shares. I think it was 1 million shares each. Estimated around $33 million in value at the time. Now, executives sell shares for many personal reasons, diversification, taxes, whatever. But when top management sells substantial amounts during such a critical growth phase and strategic pivot, it can sometimes raise questions in the market about their own long-term conviction, or maybe if they think the stock price got a bit ahead of itself short term. It just adds another layer of caution for investors evaluating the story. And of course, you always have to watch for potential dilution from future equity raises needed to fund all this expansion. Okay, let, let's try to tie this all together for the listener. Mm -hmm. Iron is clearly attempting this incredible high wire act, using cash from crypto mining as a launch pad to become potentially a technically advanced AI compute provider. What's the core investment thesis here? What defines their potential moat? I think the potential moat rests on those three pillars we discussed. One, that full stack infrastructure ownership, giving them cost control and deployment speed. Two, the early and aggressive move into liquid cooling, positioning them for future high-value workloads. And three, that NVIDIA preferred partner status, which is crucial right now for getting the necessary GPUs and maybe helping land key clients. The existing mining operation acts like, uh, like an internal funding mechanism, a safety net almost. So based on the One More Money blog's analysis, this isn't being presented as a safe, stable kind of investment, is it? Mm -hmm. No, absolutely not. It's framed very clearly as a high volatility, high optional return type of growth play, high risk, potentially high reward. The bull case scenario requires near perfect execution. They need to hit those ambitious AI revenue targets, scale efficiently, and eventually reach positive free cash flow from the AI side. The bear case is basically execution failure. Falling behind competitors, facing construction delays, maybe running into power grid issues, or critically, if the crypto market tanks and that mining cash cushion disappears. Given that extreme volatility, that 4.2 beta, the analysis suggests a cautious approach might be wise. Maybe thinking about staggered entries rather than going all in at once. And definitely keeping a very close eye on key milestones like major AI contract wins or updates on facility progress. Well, thank you. That was a fantastic breakdown of Iron's really complex and frankly fascinating situation. It's a prime example of how established players are scrambling to adapt to the sheer speed and scale of AI. Yeah, hopefully this discussion gives you some useful points to consider in your own research into this whole uh, rapidly evolving sector. And maybe a final thought for you, the listener, to chew on. If Iron actually pulls this off, if they successfully build out this large-scale liquid-cooled AI capacity and attract those premium clients, what does that imply for the long-term value of competitors who only built infrastructure based on older, air cooling technology. That shift could potentially render a lot of existing capacity less competitive much faster than people think. Something to consider. Thank you again for joining us on the One More Stock channel for this deep dive. If you're interested in U.S. stock investment, 
and you want to make sure you don't miss out on our latest videos, please do hit that subscribe button. And, you know, liking this video and leaving a comment really helps us understand what topics you find interesting and want to see more of. Now, just a brief disclaimer before we go. Please remember that the information shared in this deep dive is based solely on the material provided to us from the One More Money blog and is for informational purposes only. It does not constitute financial, investment, or trading advice. Always conduct your own thorough research and consult with a qualified financial professional before making any investment decisions. Thank you for watching.